Hi there. Um, welcome to my first tutorial on 3D modeling a Lego in Autodesk Inventor. So this tutorial is going to be broken up into several parts showing you um, the basics of how to model something made of pretty simple shapes. So Legos, when you look at them, are mostly rectangles and circles that have been extruded, um, turned three-dimensional. Um, in a pretty regular and geometric pattern. So before I did this video, I took very detailed um, dimensions of my Lego. And uh, using that information, I'm going to uh, go ahead and start to make a new part. So in Inventor, I'm going to create a new part by clicking on the button right above New there. And in the templates, there's a bunch of different templates there's a template in the metric system called standard millimeter. I'm going to be making an inventor part that is measured in millimeters. I made all of my dimension readings when I made my sketches uh, in millimeters, so I'm ready to go ahead and start. The first thing that I will do is examine my Lego, and um, when I look at it, I can see that it's mostly rectangular. So my very first sketch that I'm going to make is going to be a basic rectangle. So I'm going to pick a plane, any plane, and then using uh, the rectangle tool, I'm going to start at the origin for reasons that um, uh, will become apparent as we keep going. It's actually best to start your drawings at a fixed point. So whether it's um, the origin on, on a sketch plane, or sometimes you could start a, a sketch on another side of a part at a corner, but a known point is a good place. Um, it helps when you get into measuring dimensions. So right here at the origin, I'm going to start my rectangle at 0, 0. And then um, according to my measurements, my um, Lego has uh, the top looking down on it. It's um, 16 by 32 millimeters. So right now in the um, box, you can see that that 16.278 millimeters is uh, highlighted. If I type a number in there, like 16, um, it will put 16 millimeters in. Now instead of hitting enter, I will hit tab and put 32 in. And that will, t the tab takes me back and forth between the two of those things. Um, well, what happens if I didn't do that? So I'm going to just undo that for a second and show you what if I just drew a rectangle and then, oops, those aren't the right sizes. There is a tool called Dimension, and Dimension is how we tell Inventor where everything is located and how big it is. Now, I don't have to tell Inventor what these two sides are. It knows that it's centered on this point because I, I fixed it in space there. But I do need to tell it anything that's green. It means Inventor doesn't know where something is. So I am going to go ahead and make this side uh, 32 millimeters, enter. And then this side, I'm going to make 16 millimeters, enter. Perfect. I am now going to take this rectangle and turn it into a rectangular prism, three-dimensional, by extruding. And this looks pretty good. There's only one shape to extrude. Um, according to my measurements, it is actually a nine millimeter extrusion, and that gives me the basic shape of my Lego. Now, the rest of this tutorial, um, I'm going to focus on adding, um, first of all, carving out the inside, which I'll do next, and then I will also put the little bumps at the top of the Lego, and that's where this tutorial will end off, um, continued in the next one. So to hollow my Lego out, um, I'm gonna go to my view cube here, and um, kind of move it around until I'm looking at the bottom. And when I get near there, I'm just going to hit bottom. So I'm looking at the bottom of my Lego. I want to make another rectangle that um, is going to show which part of it is actually uh, carved out. So I need to make a new sketch. And I'm going to actually make my sketch on the bottom of my Lego. So when I take the tool and I um, hold it over the bottom of my Lego, it lights up and it knows that I want to make a sketch there. Oops. If that happens, it means that you've actually started to pull away from that and it wants to know how far from that particular side do you want to draw. Like if you wanted to um, draw a picture that was not on that side, but maybe a millimeter away from it. Um, in that case, this case, I don't want to do that. I actually want to draw right on the side. So it's important that you just click and not click and drag. 
So here I am on the bottom of my Lego. And by the way, when I pan across the screen using my mouse, I'm using the center mouse button and pushing it down and just moving the um, drawing around on the screen that way. That's called pan. I'm going to draw another rectangle, just kind of roughly in the middle here. And when I took my measurements, I recognized that the thickness of the underside of the, the Lego walls, like from here to here, I measured that. So I'm going to use the dimension tool, and I'm actually going to put those dimensions in. Now, the fact that my first sketch was nice and locked into place and I knew what everything was is going to make this a lot easier for me. Um, notice that when I hit the dimension tool, I click one side, then the next, and then I move this around so it's someplace convenient. I'm now going to tell Inventor how far apart I want those things. So I want them to be 1.5 millimeters. And I actually want each side to be 1.5 millimeters. So again, with the dimension tool selected, I just pick one side and then the thing I want to compare it to. Put 1.5. Now you may not have measured it this way. If you measure it across from here to here, you can enter that dimension in as well. Um, there's more than one way to do this, and I'm just following the measurements that I took. So that would make the part of my Lego that I want to be carved out. So I'm going to finish my sketch, and now when I look at my Lego, um, I want to extrude this shape. Now I don't want it to come out, I actually want it to be carved in. So to do that, I will change the direction. And you'll notice that the um, extrude, the second set of uh, things here actually also changed. So this, when it's out, you'll notice that this first one is um, selected. Join means basically adding material. When I change the direction, Inventor is smart and says, oh, in the opposite direction, you're actually cutting things. So now the second button is selected. Um, I don't want to cut all the way through. Nine millimeters would take me completely through, and that's not it. So using my ruler, I estimated that it was about eight millimeters deep. Excellent. So now I have the overall box shape of my Lego. If ever you're, um, you have a hard time finding your Lego on the screen, or if you end up like way over here or zoomed out funny, and you would like to just get back to being able to see it easily, the View Cube has a home button that you can use, and it'll bring it back to someplace that um, you can see easily. So for the last part here, um, I am going to make the little dots on the top of my Lego. So just like before, I'm going to start a 2D sketch, and I'm going to make um, that there. So one of the things that you can do in um, Inventor is actually make a pattern of a feature. So if I make just one dot, I can then pattern it uh, at, in a nice regular fashion because Legos are made very regularly. So I'm actually only going to draw one circle on this um, on my my uh, Lego right now, and it doesn't really matter where. I'm, in fact, I'm going to try to not start it on any particular spot. When I measured the top dots, I measured them to be about five millimeters. So I'm going to do that. Now you'll notice the circle is green. That's because Inventor doesn't know exactly where that circle is supposed to be located. Um, if you very carefully select the side of the rectangle and then the side of the circle, you can um, tell Inventor how far from the side of the circle it is. If you're not careful, you will be selecting from the side to the center of the circle, which maybe is what you measured, but that's not what I measured. I measured from the edge. So with dimension, I'm going to select the outer edge and then the edge of the circle and when I drag it across I'm going to enter the amount that I measured which was a millimeter and a half. Um, so now the the circle has moved the correct distance to the side of the Lego. It's still green though. Why is it green? Because it doesn't know where it's supposed to be um, in the horizontal axis. So I'm going to do the same thing. Select the side of the Lego and carefully select the side of the circle. And um, I'm going to put that dimension and make that also 1.5. And as soon as I do that, the circle turns blue. Inventor now knows exactly how big the circle is and where it's supposed to be located. And that's important. So that's the circle that's going to make the first of the dots on my Lego. I'll hit Finish. And now I want to 
um, extruded. Again, if I turn it three-dimensionally, it, it helps me sort of imagine the depth. So I'm going to hit extrude, and I'm going to click on the circle that I want to extrude. Um, according to my measurements, it was about two millimeters tall. So now I have one dot on my Lego. To make the other seven of them, I'm going to use here in the 3D model tab the rectangular pattern. A rectangular pattern is one that goes in rows and columns. Don't confuse it with a circular pattern. Students see circles and they think, oh, I'm making a circular pattern. A circular pattern would be a pattern that actually starts at a center and makes a circular pattern where they're actually the things you're patterning are in a circle. And that's not what we want here because Legos, of course, are rectangular, not circular. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the rectangular pattern. And the first thing it wants to know is what are you patterning? So where it says, do you want to pattern features? I sure do. So I click on the feature right there, that dot, when I click on it, now Inventor knows, oh, you want to pattern that. Now you have to tell it how do you want to pattern it, in which direction. Um, I want to actually pattern it in two directions. The first direction, to pick a direction, you click on the little arrow and then find a feature on your drawing that runs in that direction. So if I click on this edge right there, you can see that Inventor thinks that at least it's got the axis correct. Now, it's trying to put the dots on the other side of my Lego. Obviously, I want the dot over here, but that's an easy fix. In my rectangular pattern, this little red and blue flip thing, that puts the um, dot at least going in the correct direction. Now, when I, um, the next thing I want to fill in is how many of these do I want? Well, the long way on the Lego, I want there to be four. Great. The last thing I have to enter is how far apart are they? Now, you have to remember it's going from the center to the center of each of these, not edge to edge. So when I put my distance in there, I had to do a little bit of math. So I knew that each of the dots was three millimeters from the next one. And I know that the each dot is five millimeters. So five plus three is eight. And that gives me the right spacing. But I'm not done yet because right now I only have one row of dots. I actually want a second row. And the rectangular pattern tool allows me to pick a second direction as well. So I click on the arrow and then I click on the line and try not to collect the surface. If you click the surface, you're going to get some unexpected results. So with your mouse, hover until just that edge, that line um, is highlighted and then click on it. And you'll see that uh, inventor put that second row. Now, what would have happened if it was over here? Remember this red and blue arrow just changes which way the pattern is um, added. These are not the right distance apart. Um, Again, they're three millimeters apart across from each other, and each circle is five millimeters. So I will put eight millimeters in there. And that is um, good enough for the absolute basic shape of a Lego. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to add um, some of the features that are inside of the Lego. Thanks.